iDubbbz used to be very mean in his videos. He destroyed people. That's what he was known for. And lately, there's been series of videos going around about the victims of someone, the victims of CoffeeZilla, the victims of me, <laughs> but not my YouTube victims, my murder victims, and the people that I've been hurting for a long period of time and killing and murdering and slaughtering or in my basement, etc. iDubbbz has a lot of victims and this retrospective is going to open your eyes on a lot of different things. We're pretty much just gonna be looking at how he utterly and entirely destroyed quite a few creators. How's it going, bros? My name is PewDiePie. Lawsuit from your mama. I'd say that iDubbbz is one of the titans of content creation. He's not super relevant nowadays, but he was like the shit when YouTube was first really kicking it into high gear, creating these interesting communities that it's fun to be a part of. H3, Keemstar, <laughs> iDubbbz, me. Not really, I was irrelevant then. I, I played feed and grow fish game and I looked like this. All right guys, so we're back again playing fish feed and grow. I apologize for that. Uh, passionate intro, but we're gonna play Crab Madness. But did I sign Uh, yeah! No, I didn't really. I didn't actually. Just kidding. Back in 2015 and 2016, iDubbbz was one of my favorite content creators, personally. I really liked his Kickstarter crap videos. He convinced me he had some kind of cancer. That's why he burped all the time and was bald. I even saw him on Omegle once. Like, not even joking. I actually saw, I, I met iDubbbz on Omegle once, crazy. He made YouTube look very fun in the way that he did it, and it made me want to do it in the way that I want to do it. And quite frankly, I didn't. I just played Feed and Grow Fish and Amazing Frog. iDubbbz, like myself, has changed dramastic, dramastically, <laughs> dramatically. iDubbbz, like myself, has changed dramatically since 2016, 2015, 2017, that era of YouTube. And he has made a lot of videos on different people that have absolutely cemented his place in the Mount Rushmore of YouTube commentary videos. The content cop videos, specifically. What we do here is go back, eh, eh. I've gotta say I did hate that song when I first heard that. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I didn't get it, I don't understand it. Now, I don't know if we're starting with the biggest victim of iDubbbz, but we'll start with Jinx. Do you guys remember Jinx? Jinx Reload was ahead of the curve. He was a reaction channel before the dark times of YouTube in which everyone has a reaction channel, including myself. It's a second channel, but we also release vlogs occasionally. Check this out. Yo, do you remember this thing for this? I don't know, no. Well, um, I think you're on it. You <laughs> think so? Yeah. It was back this way somewhere. Okay. It's very fun, and we just fuck around and say shit we shouldn't. I think the case of Jinx is hilarious because it was a very different time on YouTube, and now, you know, things have changed so much, the majority of Twitch is doing less than what Jinx did. Even less. They're adding even less. They just sit there, they watch videos, they stand up, they walk off, they eat on camera, you know, they forget to turn their camera off and jack off, etc. Uh, or is that just me? And that's why I don't post on Twitch anymore, guys. Bet you didn't know about that, did you? I'm just kidding. I'm saying false shit just to spread more rumors. <laughs> me when I spread information! Me when I spread this information on the internet! <laughs> Jinx would, in his own words, react to almost anything. The guy was not above reacting to, I mean, really, any, he would genuinely react to anything. Anything! It didn't matter! He just stole shit, pretty much. He's a comedic genius or something like that. iDub said it best in his video, though. He stole content from everywhere. And it's, it's crazy because this is just normal now. This is what Twitch is. YouTube, not as much. There are still a lot of really bad reaction channels that just narrate things that are going on or whatever they provide. No, you know, there's no sort of value or character in it. There's a clear difference, in my opinion, between good reaction content and bad reaction content. There are a lot of people, myself included, who like watching reaction content. For example, Critical. I love watching Critical just talk about stuff that he's watching or whatever on stream. It's entertaining and nine times out of 10, I would never watch the video anywhere else unless Critical, you know, is showing it or or Mudahar, whenever he finds something, etc. I don't think many people would argue that this is the same thing that generally happens now on YouTube. 
it's mainly a Twitch problem. XQC, for example. Hassan gets flack all the time as well for this. Countless streamers get called out for just stealing content and then walking off and then making fat stacks or whatever. I really don't know. I don't watch a lot of streamers. It is crazy how much has changed since this video from iDubs came out though. Truly, Jinx was way ahead of his time. And one point in the video that does still hold up is when iDubs said that it wasn't entirely Jinx's fault, but the audience promoting it in the comments. This is only half Jinx's fault, okay? The other half lies squarely on the people that watch him because these are the people that are feeding the cancerous content. If you don't believe me, just read the comments of this video. Do Fetty Wap next. Jinx, can you please do a Hopson interview? Bruh. LMFAO, keep them coming. You should do Chris Brown. Kendrick Lamar, please. Do you guys kind of get it now? All content is propagated by the audiences that enjoy it and let it exist. It's kind of how YouTube works. It's kind of how algorithms work. They're just potential. Right? Like there's the algorithm's not real. Your content is just either something that people want to watch or it's not. So things have changed, obviously. The reaction stuff has changed massively. All in all, I think reaction content is fine, but the OG reaction content that started on YouTube was not good. Uh Blasphemous, for example, another guy that just didn't add anything and stole people's thumbnails and content all the time. Jinx, etc. They deserve to be scared off the platform. Who the f cares? But regardless, his legacy lives on in the content we still consume to this day. Doubly also would like to clarify that iDubs clearly pointed out that basic reacting isn't the main issue. It's just stealing content and then claiming it as your own. From this, we got the birthplace of iDubs' interest in charity boxing matches. It never came to fruition, unfortunately. Would have been awesome. So what happened to Jinx? Well, he's still on the platform, but he gets like 100 views a video, which is so sad. I think we lost the fight. Yeah, I think so too, cuz. Oh, no, we lost him, man. How is he not doing that? That is so unbelievable. How about his Instagram? Oh, okay. He does a little better on Instagram. That's adorable. He's also on TikTok, by the way, and he kind of refers back to his old content. Damn, he does pretty good on TikTok. Seems like he's staying in his lane, though. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's got a kid. He's happy. What else could you possibly want in life? Now we go to potentially the largest victim, I guess, uh, of iDubs. I'm not 100% sure. He's still around. He didn't really seem to be that victimized by this whole thing. But this was massive and colossal when it first happened. And I watched every second of it for some reason. Keemstar. I just feel like he has a very like abrasive yeah. way of interviewing people. That's kind of just entertaining. Why'd you do the shaking thing? thing? Um, <laughs> it's just like a way that I explain things. I have autism. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, like me and Keem have a lot of sexual tension. I have to say, to be honest, I dubs content cop on Keemstar just goes after him and says that he's a terrible guy and he makes bad content and he's a rat and a gnome. On his Twitter, he will constantly allude to people being guilty or innocent or not guilty, depending on whether they go onto his show or not. Keemstar, I know you're very f***ing slow, I said elude. You, your, your hand is fucking shaking right now because you really want to do a Twitter video and say, Dude, you gotta think about this logically. The only time some big YouTuber wants to come on Drama Alert is to clear their name because they're in the right, right? And the only time like a small YouTuber wants to come on is they want to come on like no matter what because they're about to get a lot of exposure. He calls out how manipulative he is by going on Twitter and alluding to people that if they come on his show, they can prove that they're innocent in certain times of drama. He also takes a dig at him and says that he's the news. Keemstar is very adamant that the Drama Alert channel is different from his Twitter account. They shouldn't be uh, compared to one another because one is very opinionated and the other one is facts, news, and hard-hitting reporting. However, one is run by a complete sociopath and the other is also run by the same complete sociopath. He says that he claims he doesn't have opinions but is always giving his opinions. Keem then says it himself. Now, I don't give my opinions on Drumler. In fact, that's the reason why my show is so successful is because we don't bombard you with opinions. This is really where Keemstar's retardation is highlighted, right? <laughs> What a crazy time. Holy shit. Oh, wow. 
he just keeps calling him out and saying how he's a backstabber and an overall terrible person and he even showed a dm of uh keem having a bit of a power trip it's been rehashed a million times i don't want to stir up any drama idubs ended up ending the video off uh basically proving that keemstar is a gnome i think he he drove to the desert and sets a gnome up on a hill and then shoots it with a shotgun that's supposed to be keemstar And he's got a shitty Mossberg. Any last words, Keemstar? Drop Alert Nation now over 1,386,000. Somebody once told me that I... And then it ends with an epic all-star parody. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's a long, long, long time ago. This stuff has changed keemstar now i believe refers to himself as a villain on the internet like he really leans into it and idubs has just taken a absolute complete different turn from where he was i mean i've seen more offensive shit just in the 10 minutes of of, of fucking going through what we've just gone through than i think i've seen all year just watching normal youtube everyone's way different than they used to be so what's old keem up to now well sometimes he comes on the some ordinary podcast and argues with my PNG friend, Nux. I feel like people aren't against you as much as they feel like you're losing the forest for the trees. I I'm sorry, like what did you say? I to the like guy people... that like is five, tw excuse me, 12 minutes late to the show. What did you say? Uh, the guy that's 12 minutes late to the show. That was the one that suggested That's the other thing. That's the other today. thing. I come here last minute. <laughs> I come here as a guest last minute to save their show so they have a host. Everyone's here except for the little dude that's afraid to show his face. That will talk about other people's appearances, but won't show his face. Go ahead. What were you saying? Do, do I talk about other people's you appearances? Call, you called me much? bald. I feel dude, like that... he's gonna fly. He, you know that wasn't gonna fly. I called Keem bald. You did last You said episode. something. I don't really care. It's not that important. I get it. He's stepped back a lot and he's kind of keeping to himself a bit more now, I think. He does in as respectful of a way as I possibly can because I try not to personally attack people nowadays. Um, you know, whenever it's, unless of course it's convenient to me to personally attack someone. He does still sort of resemble that gnome, I do have to say, but that just comes with age. I, you know, if I grew my beard out, I would also look like a gnome. It's just kind of a thing that comes, you know, it's just natural, the natural progression of being a man. Gnomes are gnomes for a reason. I don't actually know, even know how tall he is. I think he'd be a gnome if he was really short. I don't know how tall Keemstar is. 176 centimeters. Okay, I have no idea What's how that? much that is feet. It's gonna be like it's five, like five eight. Shut up! No, it's not. I'm taller than five four. What the? F You're five nine. Okay, I'm five nine. That's what I'm saying. But it says five eleven on my license, so. Well, that's like normal height for men, I think. Not for Americans. And actually, I'm seven years old, and I'm in I'm in my seventh year of school, and I'm uh, six four. Whenever you mention height on the internet, especially if you're a creator such as myself or whatever the. I am. People are always very quick to compare how tall they are and then also mention how young they are. It's a very hilarious thing that I love reading. Oh yeah, I'm seven years old, dude. Oh yeah, I'm nine years old and I'm a senior in high school and I'm seven foot four. Okay, Tana Mojo, possibly the biggest, all of all the content cops, I would say the biggest one, like in terms of reach and, and just how crazy it was because it was the classic moment that I will show to you in a, in a minute. It's, it's, this one you definitely know. The Tana content cop is probably the most strange one, the most bizarre of all of them. Idubs did not like Tana's content and Tana did not like Idubs and wanted him to KHS. Does the, uh, KHS, yeah. KHS, you know what that means. She said, so three million people subscribe to you and you openly say the N word and R word, KYS. She then explained to her community after that moment that she took it down because she told him to KHS. He then talks about her life and how crazy it is. Her life is fucking bananas. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's not bananas. It's actually very mundane. If you boil down any of her videos, you realize, holy shit, I've gotten in arguments before. Someone has lied about me before. I've had a horrible experience with customer service representatives as well. Because she makes a bunch of story time videos and then just, I guess, makes shit up. I don't know. I figured all story time videos were fake. Anytime anything crazy happens to people, I just automatically assume that it's just not real or it's heavily exaggerated. And this is, you know, throughout history, I've always thought this, like the true events of Wyatt Earp and Tombstone. Come on. Really? Uh, come on. 
on. Are you sure about all that? <laughs> if it's not like documented with video, I just don't believe that shit. So I'm really not gonna believe Tana Mojo. He then echoes the same sentiment that most of us have whenever we see creators talking about crazy stories or whatever, they're just making shit up. They're exaggerating those things clearly for content. It makes sense. That's what people do. They lie, they cheat, they steal. Also, a long time ago. I don't know if she still does that. I have no idea. I've never met, met Tana Mongajo. Then iDubbbz gets back to the point of her stating she got originally mad because of iDubbbz's use of the N-word. To which she did research and found that she used the N-word rather maliciously, literally hard R. A couple months ago, Tana Mojo tweeted at me that she was very unhappy with my use of the N-word. I didn't respond to her tweet. Instead, I did a bit of research and I found out that she used the dreaded N-word in the past. But she didn't use the N-word in the same way that I use it. She used it in a very mean-spirited way. You know you're stupid That's like... Very bad, very bad footage for sure. Tana's excuse to this was that she grew up in Vegas and she thought it only meant homie or friend. Not a great excuse. That's an interesting thing to call your homie or friend. That's an interesting way to say homie or friend. I don't know, it's odd. And I think that was iDub's main point there. iDub's clarified that point and said you cannot claim ignorance of a word just because of the context that it's used in. And in every high school in America, you learn about slavery and racism and you know, all that stuff. Growing up in Vegas, everybody said those words and I didn't even know that they were considered racist at all. They were in rap songs and I totally thought it just meant like homie or like friend. She does a very poor job of trying to explain it away. She's saying, I was 13 or 14. I didn't understand the use of the word. I always thought it meant friend or homie, despite my use of it being, you know you a stupid <laughs> right? He explains what we're all feeling like those are weak defenses for explanations, and he then decided to go to a meet and greet and try to get her to say the word as an ultimate resolution to this part. <laughs> And all this shit's super outdated, by the way, in regard to the word. You cannot say the N-word. It is not appropriate to say, especially not on the internet. I will not be saying it. I do not say it. I don't really think it's cool or anything like that. With the hard R, though, it's a bit of a different story. Um, and I mean that in the Linus Tech Tips way, where it's like the, the R word, the one for people who are mentally handicapped. Because if you haven't seen that clip, that just makes me seem like a, a person who uses the N-word a lot. The, the casual sort of gay humor casual use of the hard R. Oh, really? It's jarring. Yeah, it's it's jarring now. And for- Casual use of hard R. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh- Are you talking like N-word hard R? What? No. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's how people use that term. No. I think that's so. That's the N-word. What are you guys talking about? Am I mistaken? I think so. No, the, the, one, the one with the, uh, with, like for, like, mental disability. I'm pretty sure people use hard R in a very different way than you just used it. Okay, either hard way. Hard R means ending I understand, the I understand, I understand what you mean. No, I'm not talking about that. Okay, cool. So, I'm glad that I'm we have cleared Neo that up. I'm freaking Neo over here, dude. We're dodging bullets. That yeah. was bad. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, make sure to include that clip in the video. Thank you. Appreciate it. We then get to iDubbbz meet and greet experience with Tana. He gets some merch, he gets to the place, it's all fun and games. He then walks right up next to her for a picture and says the famed word, the famed epic moment that we all have seen. Say, Team Star. It is so wild how that all uh, transpired and then he like, she said that he, I don't know. That is such an insane, insane video. That's just so and strange and bizarre and unbelievable. Oh my God. Her retelling the story from the way that she perceived it happening is, is probably the best part of this whole thing because she's just exaggerating so grossly and proving his point to a, an extent that you just could never have expected. It's wild. He walks up to me and he kind of like locks his arm around me, like around my neck like this. And it, it wasn't like it was like a chokehold or anything. It was, it was very like firm and like tight, like I couldn't have really gotten it out. So that makes sense. Tough. I'll explain it in a second. And so the guy looks at me and he wraps his arm around me and he looks at the camera and he goes, say, and puts his thumbs up and then like blank. And he says the N word, like hard R. She says she tried to break his grip or whatever. You can clearly see that that's not the case. He was just like, had his arm around her. She says she was scared that he had a gun or a knife and, and just wondered if she should run away after she pulled away. I, I don't know, it's it's pretty wild. 
then she starts crying and acting like a victim etc she doesn't know what she did to deserve all this and then he plays the clip of uh her saying that he she wishes she broke he broke all his legs and lost all his subscribers i don't fucking i don't know it's just it's just so old and you know this is the thing though it's like we're, we're going back to retrospective it feels like I feel wrong. I feel like I shouldn't be talking about this. I feel like this has already been stuff that's done and gone. <laughs> yeah. He leaves the last part of the video calling out how she always exaggerates her stories for views. In this section of the video, I want to address the exaggerations and small details that she embellishes just to make the story more interesting. And I look at him and I'm like, no. And like we had to kick him out. He was like trying to fight people. And it was really a sketchy situation to be honest with you. I was like trying to fight people and I was like trying to fight people and I was like, We're getting kicked out apparently. Go. I just want to I'm VIP though. I'm VIP. She even did a story time saying that he was trying to fight people, which is just so absurd. I guess she just assumed that he wasn't recording the whole time. He wasn't documenting this for a video, <laughs> which makes sense because this is wild. It's crazy as Also, it's wild that her story time was on stage. She did this. She's just telling stories on stage and making money from that. That's fucking mind boggling to me. What a strange world. He shows footage that he just didn't fight anyone, of course. She just exaggerates all the time, every single part of the story. It's wild. Then he ends the video by saying, it's all okay or none of it's okay, stating that words are allowed to offend you, but you can't pick and choose which words are okay and which words are not okay. And that was the end of the drama between Tana Mojo and my boy, Idub. And that is, it's either all okay or none of it's okay. It's important to remember if you ever mistakenly identify a word as off limits. No words are off limits. You're allowed to get offended by the words and say, oh, I, I, I didn't like that very much. But for you to come at the person and say, you're a bad person for saying this. You're racist for saying this. At the end of the day, everything's a choice. Black people can choose to get offended by black slurs. Asian people can choose to get offended by Asian slurs. White people can choose to get offended by black slurs, and Tan Among You can choose to get offended by black slurs. And by the way, the all or none okay, I mean, obviously, this is outdated. This is super, super old. I think that just doesn't really make a lot of sense, personally speaking. What do you guys think? Do you think they're all okay? I think they're definitely all okay to just think in your head, because, like, you can think whatever you want, and you can also say whatever you want in confidence, and you can say, you know, I would say all, I say all sorts of things. Um, not just specifically words, but like paragraphs and fr entire sentences that would get me burnt on the internet. I would explode for sure. And th there's not a single slur involved. I kind of understand, but it's like, you know, if you're going to say it online and stuff, that's just different, right? What? That's just kind of dipping, isn't it, Bibbit? What do you guys think, though? Do you think this is outdated? Do you still think it's all okay or none of it's okay? I really don't know what I think, to be honest. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt. But in the modern age, I feel like everything is too murky to be able to determine what is ethical online because of like cancel culture, which is pretty epic in my opinion. And then also just people getting mad and not understanding. There's just a lot lost in context. It's very just gray. So I feel like real life is super different from the internet. And I definitely think there's, there's certain things you shouldn't say on the internet. TBH. Anyways, so where is Tana Mojo go now, Mo now? She's just doing her own thing, it seems like. And she's um, thriving, I think her friends would probably say. She's got a podcast. It's pretty baller. I, it's, I've seen a couple of clips. She made Matt Rife look like an idiot, which I really like that a lot. Uh, and she seems like she's just kind of doing well. And I think they're friends now or something. And it says, iDubs has apologized to Tana Mojo. And I don't know how I feel about it, you know, because like Tim inevitably making me kind of canceled and mm -hmm. lose subscribers and have to apologize and all that type of stuff. I, I kind of think I like deserve that. And maybe that's like dark, like to say. Also in light of iDub's recent apology and unlisting of all these videos, the reason I decided to do the deep dive and make this video and kind of, you know, revisit this stuff because it is so interesting and it is such a deep facet of YouTube that's super important to me. It was like my formative years. <laughs> Ian has distanced himself from this. He's trying to move on. He's trying to do his own thing now uh, and separate himself from this dark time. And Tana saw this and is just like, I didn't deserve an apology. And comes back with a surprisingly, I guess, based and red-pilled, which I did not expect that, but that makes sense. I mean, that's pretty cool. Next, we have Leafy, who was last year, the year before, deleted from YouTube for harassing Pokimane. When iDubs did a content cop on Leafy, it was a 
unprecedented move. Leafy was the YouTuber that everyone was scared of. And I feel like this was probably the biggest of all the content cops. I don't really know, because I'm not judging it by views. I'm judging it just by feeling and vibes and energy, man. And the aura and how I felt. And, you know, how much better my, my playthroughs of Feed and Grow Fish were at the time. So this was a wild moment when iDubs did the content cop on Leafy. Because the last thing you wanted as a person on the internet at all with any sort of presence ever was to be in the title or the thumbnail of a Leafy video because you knew that a flood of like child soldiers essentially with torches and pitchforks, literal babies in chain mail, would go on their way to call you fat or ugly and then just make fun of the way that you look relentlessly. And at this point in time, Leafy was the larger creator between the two. And he was punching up <laughs> on a guy that made a career at punching down at children and people with disabilities. Children, sometimes they can be cringe, but you shouldn't punch them just in case you didn't know. Ian opens the video with a classic content cop moment, predicting how Leafy will respond to the content cop. And it's sort of a theme of the content cops. Ian is a smart dude. He can do research. He can kind of, uh, you know, predict patterns of behavior for people that he's done a lot of research on. He knows their habits. It's not super hard. And generally he was able to predict how the people in his content cops would lash out after the videos went live. Look at that f***ing face. Isn't this the same mother who dresses up in a green suit and dances to Uptown Pops for views? Spot on observational comedy as always, Leafster. Ian also has this criticism fairy thing that comes up uh, every time he says controversial shit or anything that people might find distasteful. It's like being being self-aware of something makes it okay. Throughout this video, I'm gonna have moments where I'll say some controversial shit, and anytime I say that, I'm gonna have the <laughs> criticism fairy pop out and sort of deflate any opinion, any dissenting opinion that anyone might have. You I dubs, you don't know anything. It dopes, you're a piece of chat. Please log off the ethernet. It takes the wind out of people who are critical or that's like the sort of implication. On the whole, Ian is critical of Leafy of several different things. Being a hypocrite, feigning ignorance to avoid criticism, lying to his audience and saying that him and Keemstar weren't friend. Specifically, Leafy left out details of him and Keemstar's friendship to justify talking shit about Keem. Leafy also really loved the word literally or literally. He had unoriginal insults or jokes. He called people old a lot. He's not that creative, I've got to say. Calls him out for overall just being unfunny with his jokes. For example, calling people just based on the way that they look, which, you know, that thinking about that is pretty funny. Just calling someone like a murderer. You look like a murderer. What? What the f does that mean? This motherfucker right here rips people with that hat on. This guy is 100% seeing a vagina and he's definitely rips someone. Just look at his face. Look at his fucking face. I bet you anything he rips someone, it killed them and then threw them in the laundry and then made this song. I I know that you're joking. It's very obviously a joke. You're just, you're saying, look at his face. His face is a his face. Look at his dumb his face. I don't know. Maybe it is funny. After, after saying it back to myself, now I think it's funny. He calls him out for use of terrible transition slides, which is true. They're so bad. I used to f***ing love these things. It's a great way to structure a very unorganized video. But Leafy's made me hate them because he, he has them played f***ing eight seconds long. It probably does seem like an absurd piece of criticism for a Leafy fan who has drool leaking out of their mouth 24-7, who really just wants the Leafy video to last 12 hours. Well, I'm gonna make the remainder of my transitions in this video 8 seconds long. Up until this point, they've been 2 seconds long, and I think that's plenty of time to read the stupid shit I have on screen. Idubs throughout his video sort of makes fun of the transition slides and quadruples the length of his own, which are normally 2 seconds long in the content cop videos, and makes them 8 seconds long in this video to just highlight how unnecessarily long and annoying they were. The biggest part of the video, however, is the personal attack on the way that Leafy looks. He calls out his weak chin. And as a very strong chinned individual, I reveled in. I reveled in this. When this first came out, I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, make fun of his chin. He's got a weak chin. That's funny. You know, that's pretty, that's pretty funny. And now since people have learned about looks maxing and mewing, you know, you can make your chin stronger or whatever they've 
can say i don't know he put out missing posters for leafy's lost chin he made a children's book for leafy's chin he made a hide the chin game for leafy's chin then he closed out the video with another prediction of leafy's response <laughs> <laughs> year old man and this was a massive downfall of leafy to at the time right like he's on rumble now he's streams on there randomly or something i don't know he has not that many followers it's kind of em embarrassing and after the content cop came out leafy had a pretty steep decline in subs he lost about two thousand a day averaged out and i don't really know the exact reason but it was probably a mix of everything you know i dub starting kind of a trend of hating leafy and people realizing that his content was repetitive and then in 2020 four years after the content cop was made he was banned from youtube for harassing pokemon which is just so <laughs> so wild dude i'll harass our cookies all day long but Chew. Look at this. Andrew Tate is a homosexual criminal. He's really been posting some bangers. People make fun of the way he looks as well because he just like just looks like a pretty normal dude. So I don't really know. It's, it's an odd, it's an odd situation. It's funny. This guy is the type of guy who you would expect to just make fun of people relentlessly online. Now we get to the true retro. What we do here is go back. The retrospective. Was Content Cop a good idea or was it cruel? Was it smart? Was it epic? Or was it just cruel? Did it age poorly? I feel like some parts may or may not have aged poorly, potentially, but I like it. I thought it, all of them were awesome. And uh, by the way, it's just YouTube. It's not that serious. It's criticism. Okay, let's move on. Regardless of whether or not they were good or bad, iDubs had some pretty legendary moments in those videos that were awesome. He had some pretty intelligent things to say, and um, and I think it's a bit of a disservice to just say that they're all bad in a blanket statement because there are aspects of those videos that are sort of cutting edge for the time, especially. It's like something we've never seen before. People bitching and moaning on the internet. It's, it's like a thing now. It's like the legitimate thing. For example, he called out Leafy, who's an adult man that makes fun of children and then tried to hide behind the fact that he's 20. That was his excuse, is that he's only 20 years old. He made a children's book about his chin. That's genius. He perfectly predicted that Tana would exaggerate the events of what happened at the meetup, which she did, and that was epic. It was genius. He's a mastermind. He's like Stromboli. Now, all the epic parts being said, there are a lot of parts that I understand why someone who made those and uploaded them would be apologetic now for a behavior exhibited eight years ago, seven years ago. It, it, you know, there are some moments. And no, I'm not talking about the time that he chased a child around a parking lot in the beginning of the leafy content cop intro. <laughs> that's so crazy. But funny. I mean, that's funny. I assume it's fake. I like to hope that it is. That's funny holy shit it's moments like when he unironically told keemstar to uh khs that are bad i think that's a bit too far it makes sense that he'd want to apologize on the whole for just being negative right also apologizing for making tana feel super uncomfortable by saying the n-word in the middle of one of her meet and greets like that is that is out of pocket as shit i think that's something i probably would also apologize for but idubs just decided to blanket apologize for everything which i think is perfectly valid and he's obviously allowed to do that i want to know what you guys think also idubs addressing his controversial past on anthony padilla's podcast a lot of really interesting moments great thumbnail by the way <laughs> I won't repeat the bad words anymore, mister, but I will put more grease in my hair. I would like to say that I can say that, by the way, about his hair, uh, about his, because he, he has a mullet or like kind of a mullet thing. And he's, he's like a, an archetype of male now. There's the, the greasy, curly mullet hair guy with mustache. That's a white guy who's on the internet doing stuff. I get lumped into that. There's been multiple tweets that lump me into this thing. I'm not that, all right? Do I look like I'm, I'm like that? I don't think I'm like that. I don't think I'm like that. To be honest, I look like an idiot. <laughs> These guys look like they can speak to women effectively. I look like I speak to my bowel movements and expect that they'll respond. I kind of get it, right? I, I get the, the 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 stepping back. You start to realize that you're a bad influence on people. For example, he was even a bad influence on Ethan Klein when he made him say those words all those times. Well, he didn't make him, I guess, but he influenced him. He, he left such a great impression on Ethan that he said... <laughs> The N word and the F slur a lot of times on the H3 podcast. That was 
fucking crazy. And he made the blanket statement. I'm sorry to everyone that I made content cop videos on. I, I still don't like the majority of you, and that's fine, but I can recognize that you did not deserve the hate and harassment that I sent your way. A bunch of people responded, Rice Gum reacted to the apology on stream. I didn't even get an apology, but he gave me a vague apology. He said, uh, everyone that I made a vid on, but then he said Tana sp uh, 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 specifically. Um, he was appreciative of the vague apology. He didn't really like specifically apologize to him. He apologized directly to Tana and uh, black people for using the n-word a lot. Particularly want to apologize to Tana. Tana, I'm sorry. I should have never made that video. I harassed Tana in person and then harassed her online. And that's deplorable behavior. It's so stupid. I'm also sorry to all the black viewers and minority groups who had to put up with that video and put up with, you know, the phrases. I, I said either it's all okay or none of it's okay. And that's just so dangerous and stupid. And Tana, like we said, she thought she fucking deserved that shit. She did a lot of self-reflection as a result of it. I, I kind of think I like deserved that. And maybe that's like dark, like to say, I don't feel like I'm owed an apology. The only, it's kind of ironic. The only person he named directly in his apology is the person that says the apology is an apology that no one asked for, specifically her. And then she says that she's doing better now than she was before the content cop was made. So I'm not really sure. It's kind of, it's kind of wild. And now there just appears to be a massive rift between all these people. I mean, the cold ones guys, Max and Chad, they used to be really, this is just me completely speculating. I'm not direct friends. I'm acquaintances with a lot of these people, uh, and I've spoken to some of them before. This is just me speaking from a fan perspective. I was a fan of all of these people, and I will now begin to speak as a fan, not necessarily a fellow creator who can, you know, DM iDubs, whatever. This is a wild thing. This is a very strange thing. I understand the fact that he's trying to distance himself from the things that he did, you know, saying slurs, whatever, the I'm gay meme, all this wild sort of overall toxic behavior, etc. It makes sense. It appears to me like a fall from grace because I was one that was convinced that it was kind of cool and kind of funny and, and you know, the edgy stuff is all right by him. I was not super edgy already uh, and I didn't become edgy as a result. I just thought, oh, this guy's actually really smart and he's making these cool videos. Uh, you know, I would never do this. Also speaking from a fan perspective, the whole sort of disassociation from the Cold Ones crew, it hurts a little bit to see that he's not really on there, man. He's not really on there anymore. He, he didn't go to Max's, Max's wedding. Even Filthy Frank was in that shit. It's just... <sighs> and uh, and honestly, once again, from a fan perspective, that's a comparison that I would like to draw. The comparison of Filthy Frank to iDubs. Filthy Frank is a guy who also made up content and pivoted out of it really effectively. And no one, it, it doesn't need to be addressed necessarily. It really, genuinely, from, from a rational mind, it doesn't need to be addressed. I understand it. From a creator perspective, I get why he'd apologize. <laughs> Uh, so in conclusion, iDubbbz has moved on. Do you guys think that he needed to apologize? I do not think that he needed to apologize. Are you mad at him that he apologized? I'm not. Do you guys think that iDubbbz has absolutely and entirely fallen off? Or do you like his new sort of thing that he's going with? Anyways, there's not really much else to say.